Well, I wanted to ask because this is such a, a, a interesting story because you're looking at a family going through maybe one of the most important moments in their entire lives, uh, struggling through grief, kind of changing their entire way of living. What was it like when you first approached this to them? And as the story was going, what changed, I guess, for you? Um, in a new kind of wilderness, it uh, started with her, Maria, the mother of blog, like uh, 10 years ago. And she had this amazing blog telling how they wanted to live sustainable, uh, this life project they had. And I wanted to make something of their journey. But unfortunately, I didn't start. So. Ten years later almost, I, I reached out to them because then Maria passed away. And uh, it became a different movie, but still you have her like essential of her photos and story f stories from their life project, but following them in through through the grieving period and all the changes that they were going through. And you are, you're kind of mixing the documentary with home videos and stuff from their past. What was it like trying to make the camera disappear during moments with them? Oh, that was actually not a prob problem at all because they were so used to Maria, like their mother being an amazing photographer. She took a lot of photo photos of the children in the nature and together, and so they were so used to have the camera around. And we had a great relationship, so I could film them in every way, and they were so natural and nice. It was, it was as a director, it was like the best, um, uh, I don't know how to say, but the best starting point for make a film because they were so used to being... Yeah, being filmed. Was it something that you were hoping would debut at Sundance, that you would be able to premiere this as you were filming it, or did you have no expectations about that? Uh, Sundance is like the dream, you know? So you, you're always joking about this, you can come to Sundance, but you, you don't really, you dream about it, but you don't really dare to say it out loud because it's like, yeah, this is going to Sundance. But uh, for us, it was like the best place where you could screen, and it's just meet the audience here, and, and, and the festival is so great. So. It's just a, uh, an honor, and no, I could never imagine it, but now I'm really so excited about it. Mm -hmm. and it's, well, it's such a great Sundance film. It's got so much heart. It's got so much depth when you're looking at the family. Were there any moments that maybe didn't make it to the film that were, that were one of those, ah, oh, this, this one thing was so good? Many moments. I think especially like all those scenes where the children were just being in, around in nature, they were like climbing trees barefoot with an ax chopping down sticks, it's like all those moments, it just they needed to go at the end because I had to st straight to stay true to the story. So that was Killing Darlings. And as well for, for Marie, Maria's photos and stories, I put her photos and stories in a, like a voice from the past. And she also had all these amazing photos that I wanted to bring in, but I needed them to connect what would happen in present time. So I killed the darlings as well. When, when it didn't connect, it was like, you have to take it out, even if it's hurt really bad. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, what are your thoughts on grief? Just on, because there's a lot of, I guess, topics that you could have as far as how you explore your own grief. But in this, there's a lot of solitude in, a, in some cases, and there's a lot of family with it too. But how did you feel grief was explored during this film? I decided immediately that, because I learned from them that grief from a child perspective, especially, the quite spontaneous. They can be talking about losing their mom and, and the next time it's like, what's, what's, oh, what's for dinner? And so for me it was really important that I didn't put like my expectations on them, just trying to be there, for example, visiting the grave, just experience how they explored it. And the same uh, like in other, other ways, when they started talking about it, I just tried to be there and explore grief without forcing the, upon the children. And, and for the grown of like the father Nick being a single dad, it was it was easier maybe just to talk to him because you could see it so clearly that he was he was into the grieving period like almost all the time. But the kids were more like in and out and you know, yeah. Was there anything that their I guess challenges had that inspired you or that that made you after the filming or during the editing kind of look it back and say, well, that was a moment that that was even more profound than what I thought during the filmmaking? Oh, it's, it's hard to come on just like without thinking about it. But sure. um, I think it was many moments because for me, like the editing is a, is a, is a big puzzle. You mm -hmm. just have to take all your visuals, everything that you believe. And I, I make a script and I edit, edit like the script is and it doesn't work, <laughs> never. Mm -hmm. And then we have to start to begin over again and see. And, 
I, I think the moments where I saw that Maria's photos and stories from the past connected to the present time, that was like, that was huge for me. And as well, just to see like small comments, like I had Wolfie, like the youngest boy, they're talking about selling the farm and the father and the, says like, oh, this farm is like the best, this farm got everything. And then he says just, but not pet whales, like pet whales, like, like, um, uh, teddy bears, pet whales, mm -hmm. and I didn't when I when we were filming, I didn't realize that. And we saw it in the editing editing room, it was like, oh, this is amazing. So I love that just the small anecdotes, the small things that comes up. It's uh, it's nice to see when you're in the editing room and you you, you don't know it from before. It, it's fascinating the editing process with a documentary because I'm imagining you have so much more footage to go through than if it were to be like a narrative film. Yeah. How how much of a struggle was it at the beginning, or was there a lot of pieces that you already knew were going to go into this puzzle? I knew some. I knew that I really want to have this into the film. Um, I knew that, but uh, yeah, it's like you use like one percent of the material, mm -hmm. so it's a struggle. But it's fun as well, you know. It's a part of the process. So I love the moments, and it's like it's like a cliche, but it's like I'm really bad. Oh, I'm quite good. I'm really, really bad. Oh, this works, and you go like creative process, and you just have to know that when you go there, you're like, okay, you get up again, but just be there for a second, and and then you will get up again. So it's like. How long did it take to make this film? From like from when I uh, reached out to the family and like to the end, almost four years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What was the what was the toughest year out of the four? Is it just the post production or in the heat of it when you're filming? The toughest, I think, it's like you film a family in the most vulnerable time of their life, losing a mom, losing your soulmate, needing to change your whole whole life. And of, of course, for Nick, the father, I, I won't speak for him, but still, when like filming his, deciding that it's okay that I film his children, sometimes he was like, okay, what am I doing? Am I really want to be in this project? Mm -hmm. That was a difficult time because then I, I knew that this was going to be a nice movie, and I knew that they're going to be in it and be proud of it. But then I just needed to respect them, give them some space, talk about it, and then approach them like a month later, and that, okay, are you ready again? And he will be on it. But it's hard when you work two years and your main main subjects is like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do this anymore. Right. But you just need to stay calm, respect them. And if they wanted to jump off, that's OK. It's their life. It's their story at the end, not mine. Right. So. Well, and that is such a challenge because it, it is such a sensitive topic. And these kids are so young that going through that with a camera in their face can be difficult. But it's a testament to you that the camera d just completely disappears. And you do feel that everything in this is so authentic to what is actually playing out. And there's nothing, like we're seeing so many uh, like YouTube family channels and stuff like that. Uh, what, do you, what do you think is the big difference between that? They're kind of manufactured in, on YouTube, uh, what would you say? Oh, that's also a tricky one. I think this is just, it's more, I think about my documentary films a little like, like reading a book. Mm. I don't force anything on. It's not about like the, the one-liners that just like really strong. It's just more like you have to experience the whole thing. And it's, I want I want it to be a bit subtle. I don't want to force my opinions or anything of the people. And I, and I want you to take maybe the film different than than another person because I want you to relate to the film in different ways. So I think maybe that's the biggest difference, or at least in how I think about making movies. Mm -hmm. Was there are are you? yourself going to be climbing any trees anytime soon? Did any of the fun things that they were doing while they were out there make you a little more adventurous when it comes to the outdoors? Utah, we have so many different landmarks and, and national parks that people yeah. can visit. Yeah, we would love to go more like visit the nature spots in Utah, but unfortunately the family's here. Mm -hmm. So they, they went actually skiing yesterday for like the second time in their life and they loved it so much. So, uh, and they inspired me in a way like with my children before I was like, oh, don't climb the trees. I'm like, go and climb the trees. I'm like, just let them go and climb, don't say anything. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to be like more open to what just uh, the childhood and um, that you can be in nature and explore without being so scared of everything. Mm. Uh, this premiered on Friday, didn't it? Yes. How was it like for the family to see this for the first time with an audience? Oh, it was overwhelming. Mm. Yes, and very nice. I think the audience here is so there. I, they just came up to them and told them about their own experiences and just really was so grateful because of what they like the story that that, that they wanted to share the story so 
I think for them to have the premiere here at Sundance and meet the audience here has been the best it could be for them. They're so proud now and they're so proud of their story that they shared, so it, it's really good to see. Amazing. Well, if you see anybody walking out of a theater after seeing this film, what would you want them to take away? I know you want it to be a different reaction to each person, mm -hmm. but what would be the overall message that you'd like for them to have? I think it's two-sided. On one hand, I want them to have like Maria visions from earlier, like like choose, make a conscious choice on how you want to live. Like your time on Earth, it's so it's so tiny. Like the time, so use it with your loved ones and use it like the way you want to do. We don't have to live on a farm outside, like outside modern life, but but just make make a thought about it. That's the one side, and the other side is like going through grief, navigate through grief, like be there for each other and it will it will be fine eventually but we all need our different processes and we just need to meet the people in the process in, in their own way and just yeah, see each other and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Well, A New Kind of Wilderness, you should be able to check it out on digital with Sundance in the next couple of weeks. I, I'm here with the director. Thank you again so much. It was such an incredible movie and such a, such a powerful movie too. Thank you, and thank you so much for letting me come here and talk about it. Thank you. You can check out all the other stuff that we've got going on at Sundance on abc4.com. I'm Patrick Beatty. Thank you very much.